in the farm life reality. Farmers fall into two separate yet equally important groups. The farmers who don't enjoy city boy passengers and the farmers who lie. These are their stories. Ah, today's gonna be a good day. Good morning, Elmer. I see you're full of fuel. That's good. I'm not gonna take you for drives today. Ooh, look at my new dollar. Boogity, 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 Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, boy. The people who invented this semi were genius. They put an air compressor on it so you can run a hose. So when you got a low tire, you never run out of air. You never have to stop at a dollar gas station air fill up thing again. That doesn't actually work. There's supposed to be straps that go to these hooks. They go all the way to the front to keep the tarp from sagging like this. But years ago, my grandpa didn't like those straps because when you come up with the grain cart, corn hits them and it flips it out onto the ground. So he took them off. And now every time you do your tarp, they get underneath and you have to climb up here and do that. That was probably like 15 years ago when he did that but we just haven't changed it. Oh, yep, there's the other side. And the little holder thing broke off on this the other day. So we're using the old bungee strap. Oh, that was right between the bones. Nothing to see here. From the combine. Sound like maybe a hydraulic hose that goes down to the tracks or something blue, and then it drained the hydraulic tank too, so you kind of get the line off. You know, that's funny, there, there aren't any hydraulic lines on our LSW. Sometimes people think they got to bring out food to feed us to be friends. You're right. It sure helps. Hey, you're gonna break that toolbox. <laughs> <laughs> that? Yeah, a head. No? A snoot. A snoot. Not to be confused with snout or hood. It's a snoot. <laughs> a little update on these Thrashmaster concaves in corn. We took out the three cover plates that we were running in the soybeans. We've ran probably 500 acres through these so far. Feeling the edges, they don't feel war at all. And I mean, we've been happy with the lack of cracking and stuff we've been having off of them. Kind of hard to see we got some trash in with this, but I mean, I have not found anything I don't like about them yet. And they don't hold a bunch of trash up inside of them. There's nothing hanging from there. I had to go all the way to uh, Nelson's. Oh really? The farm store's a uh, hose machine bro. That's funny because Casey's uh, dough machine at the my normal Casey's uh, their dough machine was down this morning. I went to McDonald's the other day and their ice cream machine was broke. It's the first time I were getting, isn't it? She was a fast machine, she kept her motor clean. Wait, wait what's that that like sweet Caroline? Yeah. What's wrong with it, Ricardo? Huh? What's wrong with it? I have no idea. There's a hydraulic hose too, that's all oily. The, the hydraulic hose that runs and drives this planetary for the track. It Okay, the tensioner, the hose blew. And it drained a lot of hydraulic oil. So are you doing the thing now where you just replace both sides so it doesn't happen over there in an hour? Yeah, Clearly, this hose was short. That would make sense, right? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're identical track on both sides and you would have one short. Scott, what did you initially want to be? I was going to be a shop teacher. I can work on combines, combines. I can curve. build, I could build birdhouses, I can finish basements, finish basements. Would you want to be growing up? <laughs> Fireman? Well, I, I got a good angle. I got a good angle. You just get it up there close. Yeah, good angle. It only took an engineer, a handyman, and a pastor to pull one bolt. That's not what you called him. Special boy. A uh, special boy. <laughs> I didn't want to call him a special, special boy. boy. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get soft hands. Well, what brand of funnel's that? We just get it running on the end that isn't open. It'll be all right. Ricardo, remember that container holds like 50 bucks. That's why you're doing it. <laughs> no, you're doing a great job. Oh, look at that. Ricardo, is it working? Dry oh, it's the still good. Out here. That looks really good. What we needed was a pastor, an pastor, an American, an engineer, and a carton. Yeah, what, whatever he said. Oh, thank you, officer. <laughs> no problem. Oh, What's that? It says it's not low. We'll have to check it again. Okay, you want to kick that auger out? You ever driven a combine before? Sir, uh, no, no, sure haven't. Police car? Uh, maybe a little bit. Okay, same thing. You're fine. Steer to the right just a little bit. So we're good at this speed? Yep. What's engine load? So the engine load is kind of what we're using as our determiner for how fast we can go. Okay. That's one of the metrics. So right now it's 73%. She's cruising easy right now. It doesn't even start working hard until like 90. Okay, she's still 
Are you a tall turf fescue kind of guy? Oh, or? Like a nice Kentucky bluegrass okay. kind of guy. I'm yeah. a KBG guy myself. We've been working over there in some 103 day corn. Now we're in some 108. Looking at how the machine's doing. This is the importance of getting out when you change hybrids. Same adjustments as what we were running in the 103 that was doing a great job. Look how much corn we're leaving on the ground here. We need to tighten our concaves down a little bit. Oh boy. That's what I mean you need to be an operator because most people just want to stay in the seat and keep going because oh, this is combining 240, it's mm -hmm. doing fine. Not realizing it could be doing 250. I did one of the stupidest things today I think I could have done today. It's supposed to be about 70 degrees. It feels like it's all of that. I was in a hurry this morning. I grabbed the wrong socks and I put on my insulated socks. It feels like I'm stepping on an ant hill with them little biting red ants that go Sped our rotor up a little bit, close her concaves down. Let's see what kind of job she's doing now. Look at that. She clean. You know what they say the best thing to find in your field is? No. Your shadow. It shows you're out there looking for stuff, learning. Okay, we're gonna do the auxiliary grain tank trick. So put your auger out. You gotta be very precise here though. Turn your unloading auger on. Yellow. So click it. All right, now click it again. Shut her off. All right, we just filled our auxiliary grain tank. As soon as we saw a little trickle come out, so now she's full of corn. Put it back in? No, it sucked it down a little bit in our tank so we can make it to the end here. No, do you want to put the auger back in? Oh, no, you're fine. Okay. Actually, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, right by the highway, come on. Is this embarrassing for people to drive by? Yeah. <laughs> they're, gonna know. they're gonna think it's you. No, they're gonna think it's you. <laughs> this is filming right now. Jethro's? Yes, sir. Uh-oh, got Ricardo was Diet Coke. Diet Coca. <laughs> That's the most excited he's been all day. <laughs> I would tell you, I drink. If I'm rolling, I will drink two gallons of Diet Coca. Diet. Why? Why, why diet? I keep this, watch this curly finger, son. Yeah. yeah. Hey, don't judge. Don't be judged. Window tint's illegal. No, it's oh. not. Oh. What are you a cop? I'll just open my bit. windows down so I don't feel like I'm breaking the law. Is this your first time outside as well? <laughs> yeah, <pretty> <laughs> <laughs> Is this right here? Yeah. Is <laughs> 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 strength? Hey, I've had four cars in the last two minutes passing me going up hills. The one, I wish I would have had the camera on. I bet he's got chocolate brownies in his underwear right now. Passed about halfway up the hill, and just as he got in front of me, a car popped the hill. He had to cut right in front of me, and I bet he wasn't three feet away from my front bumper. And trying to cut in on a semi like that, he's lucky we didn't hit. He would have gone flying in the ditch, and these are pretty steep ditches. He would have probably rolled it and maybe not walked away, so. You know, try to be careful out there, people. We want you guys okay, alive, not injured, to try to get home for beating the clock two minutes quicker than you would have if you just would have waited for a safe spot. I'm not trying to scold you, but yes, I am scolding you. We can't help it that some of these hills, our trucks can't go up them 55 miles per hour steady like a little car, so. Like I said, four cars in just a little distance here. That's just a little bit scary. We're gonna be boogieing now. We're opened up at Carroll's. We're on the nice half mile long rows. It's yielding well over there. Dry corn combine is not slowing down. Other than the fact that John Deere's full, Nave is full, that semi's full. Dad's on his way home because he's full and I'm about to be full. I'm biting my tongue right now. I am absolutely biting my tongue right now. The 
pet auger is not working again. I'm about ready to blow my top. We haven't showed you half the stuff yet. That's... Update on the John Deere. Sounds like the entire shoe sieve section of the machine just completely grenaded itself. They're having troubles finding parts. I guess there's back orders straight from Deere. Hi, Rick. You are on the seat where I need to be sitting. And so what they're going to end up doing is they're actually going to be bringing out a different combine. Sounds like they're going to swap the tires out so that way we'll set the SW1400s on it and it'll be here in the morning. All right, buddy. You riding here? Okay. That's great. I right? throw up on the window. Disgusting. Got Neva filling me again. Just kind of relaxing out here in the field. Get away from the setup at home. Like I said, all the issues that we've been having. Up on the grain setup at home, it just gets frustrating. A lot of things that shouldn't have happened. A lot of things that shouldn't have happened. This is 14 and percent corn. Enough of me rambling on. I normally don't get rambling and stuff. Usually I let things go, but it gets to be a point after so long, it's like enough is enough. The first road trip with Maverick went pretty good. He rode on my lap the entire time and he only threw up on the windowsill and ate it up on the same trip. Oh, you only got a little on my arm. That's not bad. Oh, got on the window. Maverick, <laughs> you goober. Joe, our automation guy, he was out here earlier getting stuff set up on the automation side for the dryer. Sounds like Wade, our electrician, is supposed to be out in the morning. He's gonna get that all hooked up so we can start cooking some corn because everything we have left needs to be dried, at least as of right now. And I got back here, all the augers, all the leg, all the conveyors, all the, everything was still running, other than the cross auger that goes in the bottom of the pit, the one we keep burning belts off of. I called Joe back up, he's gonna come back out and he's gonna see why that other stuff wasn't turning off. We're kind of questioning if maybe the belts burned off on the motor that's down there again. That'd be the only logical reason why that particular one is not spinning, because on the inside, it says it's running, so not really sure what we're going to do there yet, but this other stuff's supposed to turn off, so Joe should be here in a minute. He'll get us taken care of there, so at least we won't have a bunch of stuff moving when we're not here. Even though the way we're keeping these semis moving, this doesn't really shut off for a very long time. At least right now we can still keep pulling out of the center, so I think we can open that up more so it'll pull out of the center faster since we're not running the cross auger anymore or the belt being potentially burned off. But we'll wait and see what Joe figures out. It could be something with his coating. Just made that kick off for some reason. But we've burned off several sets of belts this year on that cross auger already. So it wouldn't surprise me if it was that, but we'll see. Cooper's cruising along over there. This part of the field averaged like 210, 209, something like that. But over there, it's doing like 20 bushels better, which is weird. Well, maybe the fertility is better on that part of the farm. That's why soil testing is so important. Then we know. Maverick, come on. I don't necessarily. Maverick, get your head out of there. His head under the seat. I sat on it and it squished down and it's squishing his head. I don't necessarily unenjoy driving semi, but. I'd rather be in the combine. We keep burning belts off of that bottom auger. I can tell you what's happening. That bottom auger, half of it pulls it to the middle. The other half pulls it to the middle. And then it sits there and spins. Well, you got a big bind on the whole thing. So when it starts pulling hard like that, 
the belts down in the hole down there sitting there spinning and it burns the belt off. So when that auger ain't running now, the ends pile up quicker. We got the middle hole open about as far as it can go, but the corn can't flow to it. So now we have to put up with that. We've gone through four sets of belts already this fall. This just in with the Joe report. He said the belts in the bottom of the cross auger are in fact burnt off. But otherwise, he said something about putting new code on disables the auto shut off stuff. So he fixed that now. All this will run and once it's empty, it'll shut off. We just can't use the cross auger because the belts are burned off. I left the field at 7.24, it's 7.45, 20 minutes. Okay, there you go. Hey, Mom. Ow. Hi. We got Carol's all done. They're on their way to Bill's now. Sounds like John Deere is supposed to be coming out in the morning. Mama Cornstar is gonna give me and Dad a ride over to Bill's. We're gonna pick up Cooper, Presley, and Ricardo. We're gonna head back to Carol's. We gotta get all the equipment we left there. I think the fuel trailer's there, Cooper's truck's there, there's another semi and Presley's truck. Ah, uh, good to see we got the seven footer seat here. What are you cooking me for dinner when we get home? Fried Cerrone. Pet. Got some of that canned chicken, which that stuff is disgusting, but it's gonna taste awesome in that. All right, I'm going so slow. This champion number is doing like 350. Some moisture on this stuff, Coop. Yeah, we're running that 12.7, come on. Graham and Phantom, I think, are my two favorite words right now. Yeah, well, you might as well start figuring in fungicide. Part of the program, Cooper. Program is pretty much a word for everything. Yeah, well, you might as well start figuring in high, uh, high yields, too. You know, like those tables you did in school where you had one thing at the top and then it branched off? Yeah, programs at the top and then everything branches off of program. Yes. Level low. Pop up a lawn chair, pretzel. Get with the program here. <laughs> well, you don't like the program? What? You don't like the program? I never said that. Oh. Just part of the program. Well, amigo. Yeah. Oh. Oh. They're looking for you. Okay, thanks guys, and we'll see everybody in the morning then. Okay. Got another one knocked down, 600 acres to go, and then we'll be done with corn. That's all I got for tonight. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.